Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Distraint 2. A brilliant adventure slash point and click game developed by the awesome Jesse Mackinnon, published by the ever popular Rattalika Games and is available for just £6.99 in the UK or $8.99 in the US. Now before we begin, if you could hit that subscribe button, I would love you forever. As you know, I'm always doing awesome 100% guides. Now this is an excellent story where we play as Price, navigating between peace and harmony and the horror elements that drown him so. And the further we get into the story, the more we find out why he is the way he is. As for the achievements and trophies in the game, there are 15 most of which are story related, but there are a few missable ones which we will get on the way, including finding dancing bosses, fixing a fence, and catching five fish. But, you know, it's all easy though. But again, this will get us another 1000 and easy platinum within one to two hours. So, with that being said then, let us begin. And if we click new game, we will just uh, blast through the first little cutscene here. There are plenty of cutscenes that we uh, sort of get through in the game. But you will see just exactly where it all sort of begins and how his um, descent into madness starts. Hmm. And the heads are massive in this game, so most of them are going to be called Humpty Dumpties. And we begin in the prologue called Reasons. So again, the more we get through the game, the more you'll understand the sort of story. This is obviously just a tutorial, just telling you sort of what to do, uh, how to walk around. If you don't know how to walk around by now, you need to get a life. But press the X button to run. I try not to run most of the time, but I will sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but here comes an old man who I genuinely thought was a turtle at first like a, a weird freaking turtle man but he's just got a big massive backpack on um yeah i don't know why i thought that but this is reason why we are in the horror underworld go to the sparkly things press uh, a to talk and then we just smash through all the dialogue of course definitely worth reading it but just for the sake of time on the video i give it a smash through <laughs> And now we can begin the game proper, so uh, yeah, hold the X button to run and we're running all the way to the end, all the way to the right hand side, and we'll be knocking on that door. This one right here, there's nowhere else you can go, you just sort of go into the shadows and then we just have a little, uh, have a little wait around. We're going to see ourselves now and we're going to think, bro, what in the fludge is going on? But it's an excellently made, excellently made game. Thank <laughs> you. 
go into the next door, which is on your right, we're going into the toilet. A unisex bathroom. That can always go well, can't it? Looking at each other's genitals? No, 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 no. Um, to the left of the toilet, right here on the chalkboard, just uh, press the interact button on that, and that'll get us an achievement for basically breaking the thing. And then interact with the washing machine right here. Uh, use the rusty pipe, you've got to press up and down on the D-pad to get to uh, any particular item that you want. But for now, we will just be moving on out of the door to the right. And we'll be coming back in here in just a moment. And then when we are out of here, go towards the left until you reach the fire right here. And then use the rusty pipe on the fire. That's going to get us a dial. I mean, that's very awkwardly placed. I don't know why they just couldn't have put the shelf actually on top of the fireplace. But there we go. That's that's all good. So just go ahead and pick it up. Obviously, use the up and down again. You'll have to actually use the pick up button rather than just interacting with it with the A button. And it automatically does it for you. You have got to do a little bit of work, you know. That f bloody bit of embodiment right there is fear. And every time he appears, we've got to hide. And he only appears about three or four times in the game anyway. Let's go back into the bathroom now, uh, use the uh, dial on the washing machine and then we can do a little puzzle, v very easy puzzle, you just got to turn it sort of left and right until, you, until the, the uh, red line comes up on the right hand side there. So this is where the monster, sort of fear monster starts arriving, so our job now uh, because we turn the washing machine on, we just need to hide in the closet next to it, just while it disappears. It can catch you and it can kill you, so, you know, try not to let that happen, you know? Thanks! So once you're certain he's gone, press down on the left stick, that will enable your escape from the ever-disgusting closet, probably full of, you know, demon fiages and stuff like that. But then the washing machine will be done, press the, uh, press the A button on it, that'll give us an ice cube somehow. I don't know how, but it always works. Maybe it's just like that in Finland and uh, other cold places, Iceland, etc. But out of the door, to the left, in the fire, throw the ice cube in the fire, then use the rusty pipe on it. And that will give us a key. <laughs> now we will nip into the first door on the right. Right about. Meow. And then interact with the door on the left. Right there, we'll have to use the key then to get in as it's locked. That's handy, we found a key in an ice cube from a washing machine. Still don't understand how the key needed to get into the ice cube to be able to come out. Anyway, logic, game logic is awesome. So now just carry on to the right for a moment. good-looking chap, wasn't he? Old Greed. Greed and Reason having a little fight there. Go to the left a little bit and a little cutscene will play here. There'll be a ring that is going to appear in the wall right there, so go ahead and interact with that, see what that is. Uh, use the rusty pipe on it, and no, it's not Sonic the Hedgehog ring, so don't even think about that. So go ahead and just pick that up. 
It would have been awesome if there was a sonic noise though when you picked it up, wouldn't it? That would have been a good little Easter egg, a little fun. Uh, just go into the door in the left right there. And now you think, what the hell is that thing now? But just go to the right, to this green orb, save your game, press the A button to save your game. As many times as you want, just in case you think it hasn't saved. Uh, and then we can go back to the left, just a touch to get through the door. From here, you just want to go to the left, past the fireplace, and through Trudy next door. There we go. And then to the right a little bit, just behind the settee, uh, just interact with this to find out what in the hell this is now. So if it isn't obvious, it's a ring, so go ahead and put the ring you found earlier in it. And it's basically just a small puzzle that we've got to do, and it's literally, if you see um, north, east, west, and south, obviously put N at the very top, and then it's just very easy to decipher the picture from there. So from here then, just go to the left, through the door, we're going to have a look at the fireplace now, which is out, so you can't burn your ass on it, which is always nice and handy. Um, fear is going to start, the big monster fear, that'll start coming down, you basically just need to let yourself get caught now, and jobs are good and prologue's over, on to the main game. <laughs> So then, chapter one, Agony, not exactly the best uh, name for a chapter, but <laughs> it is what we have to deal with. So continue to the right for a moment, and we're going to hit a billboard momentarily, like under this light, and it comes from spooky-ass nowhere. So just examine with it slightly first, and after this bit of dialogue, we'll go to the right again, save the game, and then head on to the left. More spooky ass stuff now as a random phone box appears, so go ahead, examine with that. You wonder what's going on. So after we smashed all the dialogue now, just go to the left and we'll talk to our parents who kind of remind me of SpongeBob SquarePants parents. You know, the old sponge but cookie looking heads. But just blast through all the dialogue with them anyway, old cookie heads. <laughs> Here we go then, the first nicest part of the game and, you know, this section is just beautiful. So we'll knock on the door first, have a little conversation with our Ma, who is inside. I don't know what she's doing, she's probably doing things we don't want to be uh, seen doing. Or ever think about that of our mothers. <laughs> anyway, let's disgustingly quickly move on. Go all the way to the right, into the shed and go ahead, examine the toolbox to pick up the hammer. God knows what that was about with the house just now. Let's stop thinking about your mother's doing stuff, you dirty pigs. Dirty pigs. Anyway, swiftly moving on before I get banned. 
or offend someone. <laughs> we just go all the way back to the left, past the house. Now, basically, what we're going to do, <laughs> Christ, is fix up the fence. So you uh, see the sort of broken fence here. So go to the left a bit, um, pick up the plank here, and then use the hammer and nail on the uh, broken part of the fence after you saw it right here. So it's, it's pretty obvious stuff, but, you know, it's just... I always like to explain my findings and theories and what's actually going on, just in case. To do that, this will actually get us the next achievement of the game, and that is for fixing the fence. Beautiful. So once we're done here, go back and interact with your mother in the house. Don't interact with her that way, though. That's disgusting again. Stop. For the love of God, stop. Here comes Reason, who, remember, I thought was a turtle man for some reason, first of all. But here is with his big bag, so give him a little dialogue and smash through that. Once that's done, go and interact with the house as well. Don't peek through the windows though, just examine the door and she'll say, Oh my god, I was almost finished. P can you please go away? And we'd be like, Ugh. Disgusting. But now we wake up in this... Well, I don't know if we're in a dream or if we were in real life. This is a whole kind of inception thing going on. But this is the sort of kind of real life dream, real life-ish that we find ourselves at. So, go to the left and save the game. Once you've done that, enter the door just to the right of it, and then we will see old Cookie Head number 13 sitting on the settee, so give him a little uh, talking to as well. And they're all Cookie Heads or Humpty Dumpties through this point, just because the heads are so massive. <laughs> Actually, there's Humpty Dumpty, big old egghead, <laughs> but we are going into door 24, <laughs> first of all, and we're talking to the old cookie on the left-hand side. Go through another bit of dialogue with him. So we've got a puzzle because the guy's brain is too small. I don't know why his wife can't help him. Obviously not that interested, but we're going to be taking it to the original Cookie Man on the settee right outside right here. So go ahead and talk to him. Eventually, it sometimes can be a bit finicky when you're trying to talk to someone. <laughs> So this guy's going to try and figure it out for us, so we'll now go into his room, which is 22, right next to him, and then go all the way to the right side of this room and hide. And just watch the dialogue and the cutscene unfold. Well, there's a brown pants time if you ever saw it. We've all been in that situation, right? Hiding in closets and you almost get caught. For any reasons, I'm not judging you. And you don't judge me. Um, anyway, now we're out. We've got the uh, safe code, so go ahead and interact with the safe right there, right next to the closet, 649. And we find out that he's cheating, which understandably will not go down so well. But it'll get us achievements, so we're happy with that. Because we're selfish like that when it comes to achievements, aren't we? Oh, 
Okay, so now we're getting really freaked out, as in, what the hell is that thing? But we're going to exit and go all the way to the right into room 26 now. And basically, uh, go ahead, get yourself into the sort of orb right here. And that will bring us to another memory. Another nice memory, this time we're going back to our childhood. So not a lot to do here. All we got to do is just keep trying to escape. So escape first. I mean escape. Walk to the right. Try and get out of the bedroom first. And just sort of keep walking right and left and you'll get all these um, voices and noises in your head until your mother comes in. So after that weird experience, go to the left, we're going to be going back to the original Cookie Man at the very start of this, and he would have basically done the puzzle for us. So with that, then go into room 24, and then give the finished puzzle to the old guy. Easy speedy. <laughs> Ding dong, cards game is ready. Come and get it. Come and get it. So basically, they're all playing cards. You don't have to do anything. You just enjoy the cutscene and enjoy the little surprise that happens in a little bit. Shit balls! There was something nice and um, undisgusting to get involved in. So, so that it's. So there's the punishment then for cheating. You get stabbed to death. Christ! I hope nobody at the poker tournaments do that, especially on live TV. That wouldn't look the total best, to be fair. Oh no, you cheated. Get stabbed up instead. Although probably um, around the rougher part of Cardiff, that might happen. Um, <laughs> So anyway, Seti's going to disappear now, which all kind of makes sense, but we're going to go through the door, and now we're going to sort of, basically what we've got to do now is sort of edit a film reel now. So we're going to the right, to the next door, and then to the left, we're, we're going to see this little red orb thing, whatever, it seems to be following us again. So once this is done, um, you know, crapping yourself up, go to the left, go through the door. It's a bit dark, so it might be hard to see until you see the enter sign, of course. And then go to the right, and now Reason, the Turtle Man Reason, is going to start having a little chat with us once more.
and there you've seen it then the convenient film reel just dropped off it's right in front of us there right now but i ended up going way past that i don't know where the hell i went um so go, <laughs> go ahead pick that up and we'll be going to the left now and to edit it go through the door and to edit it it's sort of like a, a very very small puzzle extremely easy it should be the same exactly for every time so put the film reel in this projector right here and there's going to be four boxes as you can see so all you got to do is click a on the appropriate box so first click on the third box then the first one then the fourth one and then the second one to finish it off and that'll get us another achievement as well as us messing up the film good job yeah, once you're done pissing around with here, we're going to go to the right and through the next door. You know, a lot, lot of door switching going on. But I tell you what, this story is honestly excellent. Jesse Macklin is a brilliant game maker. Absolutely fantastic. Just go to the left, um, put the film reel, or grab the, put the film reel ugh, into the projector. And that'll sort of mess it up. But it'll give us a new character who's going to try and uh, give us a little chat. And he's a helpful little fellow, even if he is kind of forceful. Fair play, I'm pretty sure we've all got mates like that. Go on, have a drink. Go on, have a drink. Even though you're already off your nut anyway. But make sure to pick up the bottle cap before you leave. And then go past the first door and then through the second door. Oh yeah, we've all had it. Go on, have another drink. Fuck off. I mean, no thank you, very politely. So put the bottle bottom, or the bottle cap, into the projector right here, which weirdly fits and then press examine on it but of course before you press examine make sure to put the film reel in as well that always helps you know moving things along then just watch the ensuing cutscene and voila we are done with the game in about 40 minutes So that's always a nice image there, seeing your eyeballs bleed and sort of melt out your skull. It's always just it makes you all giddy inside, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, this is the start of chapter two, and this is a, a very easy start. All we've got to do is row to the left until we uh, until the dog barks, our dog barks, and we have to catch a fish. And again, it's a very, very simple mini-game on how to catch the fish. But before we move on, we actually have to catch five fish uh, for an achievement. If you do end up missing it, you'll have to come back to this game, uh, have to come back to this point in the game later on. So press down on the D-pad to fish, and then as soon as you see the rod start shaking, quickly press the A button, and that will uh, catch a fish, and that is that. So they won't actually be any more at this point, but just as we progress through the story, you'll have to wait in sort of one spot until the dog barks again. Wait in that same spot until you catch a further four. Otherwise, for now, we can just carry on until the dog starts barking his little balls off at us.
So this will be the point then just outside of the house. Now there will always be fish that spawn here so don't go and grab one and then go back otherwise you'll continue the story and again you'll miss it and have to come back to this point of the game so here he goes back in so just stay here until you catch another four fish get the achievement and then we can move our little ass on. Oh, I can't leave you boredom for a minute and a half while we catch another four fish, so... Anybody actually been fishing? I like eating fish, but I can't actually be asked to go through the process of having to do the work of catching it and then eating it. I'd be a useless caveman, I'd starve to death probably, because I'm just too lazy and couldn't be asked. But, um... Yeah, Ligma. So as soon as we get the achievement, you can start rowing to the left just a tiny bit, answer the phone, and then we'll be heading all the way to the right to end this second part of beautiful serenity. Right then, so after talking to our therapist and waking up back in the dreamland real world, whichever world it is, uh, we're just going to head to the right, save, uh, we're coming up to a save point, so go ahead and save the game right here, it's always worth doing, just in case, enter, we'll be going sort of through this shed right here, and then just go through the next door, and what we've got ne uh, coming up next is, pro probably one of the most annoying ist puzzles in the game, and this is one of those that you can only sort of one, uh, move one square block at a time, but all you're doing is sort of um, copying the patterns, but of course, only when there's one sort of square missing, you've got to do it in such a way. And sadly, I sort of messed this up, and I, it did take me, very embarrassingly, about six or seven minutes to, <laughs> to figure this one out. So, apologies that this puzzle is all messed up. Hopefully, you can do a better job of it than I, though. But again, my bad. Really, really, I'm not good at this. Hmm...
you know, this is easy enough one when you know sort of what you're doing and where you're going and what you've got to sort of do. But I had to edit it out. Um, so again, apologies about that, guys. That really wasn't the best on my half. So again, I apologize. But we will move on when we get there. And we're just going to keep moving into this green orb. What this is going to do is basically get, get us to our second childhood memory where we're having a nice little din-dins with our parents. Because it's our birthday. <laughs> So there you go, this time we didn't actually have to do anything, which is always nice, but we'll head to the left and head through the second door, which is the most leftily, most leftily, that's not even a word, most left-ish, and then just go to the sort of safe, as you can see here, pop in the combination, and that is the, and that'll get us the last square sort of puzzle piece that we need. Luckily, we don't have to do anything else other than put it in. Thank God. <laughs> put it in. That means two things, again. So, for whatever reason, it does take a while for the door to be able to end there. So, just keep going into the darkness, back into the light, and that'll get us through the door. And then, like I said, just go to the house where we've done the original puzzle. You can't put a puzzle piece in there, because it just doesn't fit. And then we can enter into the hoosen. Right then, so now we've basically entered our own childhood home, so we'll just go to the left first, enter through these doors here, then go to the right, and then enter the door there, and basically what we're going to be doing is a lot of bulb play, I know that's not a sexual thing, and we were actually going to be unscrewing and screwing bulbs in different lamps, so get that out of your head. So here's a bulb, this is what we can use, just our hands. Doesn't matter if it burns our hands or not, we've got the bulb which we need, so happy days. So run, walk, do whatever you got to do, but then we've got this red glowy bad boy stalking us once again. So we've got the monster still trying to kick our ass, so uh, just end of the door to the right of this. And we've got fear, the monster, still trying to kill us, so oh, there he is, scary looking douchebag. Anyway, enter where he is, don't worry, we're not going to die yet, and then we'll just go all the way to the right to hit a beautiful save point. Because we are going to actually get an achievement for dying from the monster pretty soon. Otherwise, what we're going to do for now is head to the left, enter through this first door you see right now, and then just go to the left and screw in the bulb. And this is exactly what I meant by bulb play. Clever with words, ain't I? Anyway, you see the hole behind the couch. Just go behind that, and then we'll pop our pop on through. So obviously, go to the right. We're gonna hit another puzzle. Thank God, and luckily, it's not like the one we used to get inside the house. So examine this. All you've got to do is rotate the pieces until you get a picture of an anchor. So there's no moving of the squares or the cubes or anything this time. Thank Christ. So that's all you've got to do then. Just rotate the pieces until you get the anchor picture. Job done. Simple pimple.
we go then. So another conveniently placed item for us there. A pendulum. So go to the left. This guy you have to deal with a bit later. So quickly nip off to the right and then go back to the left. Enabling us our exit. But yes, don't worry. He's not someone to fear. Um, well, I suppose he is a bit first, but... Um, just take the bulb first before we carry on. So basically every time we put a bulb to get into a new area, we're always going to take that bulb with us. And that is especially important for an achievement later on. So you see the grandfather clock right in front of you now on the left. Pop that in there. And I'm not sure, I, I believe now we've got to wait for sort of 30 seconds to a minute, maybe even a minute and a half for the grandfather clock to sort of um, tick over and get to a certain point. I'm pretty sure that's what happens. And then it'll basically open up a new door for us through the wall. Spooky. But yeah, it was quick there because I edited it out. But just be aware, it may take a sort of minute, a minute and a half for that cutscene to happen. But when the door uh, appears, just simply enter through it and put your bulb in. Take it out of your butt and put it in the lamp. But all we do from here, go to the right a little bit, collect the fuse, and then remember to collect the bulb on the way back out, and then that greedy ass greed lad is going to come and give us a little bit of dialogue to get on his side again. When you go to the left, that is. Greed, will he ever leave me be? The answer is no, because greed basically consumes us all in everyday lives. T that's a good touch, that. Very good touch there by uh, good old Jesse Mackinnon. Um, save the game a couple of times then here when you exit the door. And then head on to the left, all the way past the grandfather clock. And then fear is going to appear, or the monster. And basically, this is where we just let him catch us now. So run towards him and die. Past the eggheads. Past Humpty Dumpties. And we die. So, <laughs> job done. Remember to uh, collect, select, continue, though. And there we will get the achievement for dying. But, of course, when we get back into it, what we actually need to be doing is hiding from fear. Otherwise, you know, you just keep on... <clears throat> Excuse me, you just keep on dying and you can't ever finish it. So go past the grandfather clock and it to hide in this little closet right here until you think he's gone enough. It's sort of when all the eerie music stops, etc. That's when you know he's gone and then we can get out. So about now is good, the music's gone, the picture's returned to normal, go past Mayor Humpty Dumpty right there, and then go down the steps, enter, go towards the left until we see another bunch of steps we can enter to go back upstairs, and then there's going to be another bulb for us to enter on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, so again, so go left here, take the bulb out of your ass and put it in the lamp, I don't know what your issue is with putting bulbs up your butt, but it's got to stop. <laughs> um, anyway, go to the left, put the fuse actually in the fuse box and that will give, uh, give us the uh, attic ladders now. So now we can enter the attic and what we'll be doing is getting our ch third childhood memory again. Remember to take the bulb with you, that's very important. As I said before, go into this orb here for childhood memory numero uh, three -o. Not very good with Spanish. But uh, anyway, again, all we're doing at this point then, basically our mother's going to tell us to pack all our things and all we need to do is, you see the teddy bear right next to the TV there? Grab him, put him in the box 
And then with the elephant on the very left hand side, you just got to put him in the circus tent just to the right of him. Easy, nice and easy and enjoyable. Right, so after that little nightmare's ended, we're gonna exit, or, well, enter back downstairs, or exit downstairs, whatever. Remember, if you haven't got the bulb at this point, grab it now, if you forgot it. Go back down the stairs right next to the lamp right there, and then what we're gonna do is head to the left, and we'll be going through this door. A lot of door bashing, a lot of door switching, and if we just nip onto the right, we can see, ooh, spookily and scarily, the, uh, if we push the couch there, we will see the circus tent with Mr. Snout in it. So what we're going to do now then is exit the house. So go to the left, just enter through the door. Um, it's all easy enough. We're just going to the right, entering through another door. Um, Oh, well, entering up these stairs right here, and the door is all the same, isn't it? And then just go all the way to the right until we can exit. We will have a little um, surprise though, right here. There he is. Oi! And all we lovingly have to do from here is put Mr. Snouty on the pedestal, the one with the sort of light beaming off it. It can't go here, so don't even try, but this is where we're going to place him. Lovingly, of course. I hope you still got hold of that bulb and you've put it somewhere safe because this is where we're gonna need it so enter the secret sort of basement thing right here go ahead and save your game right now and then we're just gonna pop to the left and put the bulb in the lamp uh, if you keep going left that is again if you didn't have the bulb here you wouldn't be able to get this achievement you'd actually have to go back through and uh, to the house and get another bulb. So, obviously it's important you get the bulb, you see the dancing bosses, screw it in, jobs are good and you don't need to do anything else with it, so you can just take it out and on your fudge. But for now, all we're doing is just go into the right until we see the cafe and for once you can have just, just a moment's peace. Because, you know, it, fair play to this guy, he's had everything that's thrown at him so far, so we're gonna sit down, we're gonna have a nice coffee, and you're gonna love it! The old, with the old cookie egg heads right here.
So that creepy eyeless stalking little th egghead was just lost. Right, okay, well, that doesn't make it any less creepy, does it? Uh, so anyway, we're just going to the right. We've, we're sort of at our last beautiful scenic thing of the game now. Uh, we're just going to take a little beer here with old Chuck. So, yeah, for now, just enjoy the scene. And then after this is done, just go to the left. And this is basically a, a nice straightforward moment again. Who was that little lady in our lives, potentially? I don't know, but she's in a wedding dress at a beer festival, so... Hey, I don't know. His mind's all messed up. But anyway, for now, we're back in the sort of demonic reality. So, to the right we are, save the game, and then keep going right, because we're going to be pushing a seti out of the way. Which is just by the hole in this door, so we'll push this out of the way and then enter. We are now about 20 minutes from the end, so flying it beautifully. But for now, just go ahead, interact with this TV, and basically, um, obviously you've got the top buttons, which are the three on top, the bottom, which are on the bottom, and I've um, put it in for everyone, so obviously the rotate is the middle button, shrink is the minus, increase is the plus. So I've put, basically put the answers for all three of these puzzles that we've got to do. Just saves messing about and... Messing about with the explanations, etc. So once we're done here, then just go to the left just a little bit until you see the enter, and we can enter back through the door. What this will do is get rid of the sort of middle of the plank of woods that we need to be able to get through so go ahead and enter the double doors which is next to the hole in the door and then we'll drift off to the right and we've got some spooky ass wheelchair stuff happening right now which can only mean one thing 
Fear is on its way. But it's actually not. So all you've got to do is actually just um, interact with the wheelchair here. And then we'll get an item which we are going to need. So, no, don't worry. There is no fear. There is no monster at this point. I just lied to you because I'm hilarious. So go into the door on the left of the wheelchair there. And see this curtain? It's got a number on it. A number which we should be familiar with by now. So put the crank in to the left of the curtain. Examine with it, and it'll open up the number 649. So we've heard that number a lot throughout the game. And then what we're going to be basically be doing with that is we're going to be getting our little friend Reason, the big old turtle man with a big bag, except he's not a turtle man, he's just a man with a bag. So again, a little conversation is going to happen. Meow. <laughs> So the reason this number comes in handy, if we exit out of here and go all the way to the right, there is a door with a key code on it, a keypad which we need to use the key code for, sorry, and we all know the number by now it is 649, so go ahead and enter that, which will give us access to said room, because you should know how that works by now, if you've lived a life ever. Go ahead and examine, and then just open up the reception, make sure the reception's green, that means it's open, which of course we need. Gets us another achievement, as well as story progression. So we'll exit the room right here, but this is actually a part now where the fear monster is going to happen. Don't jump in the closet yet, you need to go a little bit to the left first. And then once this cutscene begins, make sure to hide back in that closet. And again, we just wait here until the music dies down and the monster pisses off. Scary ass shit dog. Right, so now we should be safe from that horrifying looking <laughs> screen right there. So go all the way to the left now. Uh, yep, all the way to the left through the double doors. Here they are. And then just go to the left and just save your game, first of all. Then we're going to be going to the left, just to get in that sort of glassy hole in the wall, which we obviously just seen. Now go to the right in the sort of first aid cabinet, we're going to get an item from there, and we're going to be doing another very, very extremely simple puzzle. Um, which will be just on the left hand side, it's that sort of bored looking thing right there. So all you got to do then, for this one, Leave the top one in the first one, and then for the rest of them, put the string or whatever it is into number four, and then press the button on the right hand side, and that's it. So it's one, four, four, four. Press the button, jobs are good, and we move on. And we move on by <laughs> exiting this place in just a moment. Just wait for scary ass shit dog to go by. Okay, now we're good. We don't need to hide, he's actually not even here. So again, you can save your game if you want. But otherwise, just enter the double door to the right of the save. And here is Mayor Egghead once again. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty did not have a great fall. Because he looks quite unbroken to me there. Do not go into this room here. It's actually the uh, room to the right of the wheelchair we need to go in. So it's just a little mistake on my part. So my bad about that. It's the room to the right of the wheelchair here. And then just go ahead... See the dead piano player? Stick your syringe in him and listen out for the song ski, the tune ski, and the cutscene ski.
Well, that was interesting, so <laughs> go back outside of the room. We're going to be heading left, and we're going to have a little weird cutscene where it looks like those dancing bosses, the achievement from earlier on. This actually really crapped me up the first time as well. Now go to the door to the right of where, whatever the hell that just was, and then we've got another very simple TV puzzle to do. Again, answers at the top. So after we've just been stalked on again by old redness, go left outside of the door and this time just smash all the way to the right where the key code, key coded lock door was. Of course it's still open for us now. So all's well that is still going well, I suppose. That, that might be a thing. Uh, examine the machine again. This time we're going to actually open up the basement, which... You know, in all sort of horror type games or any games like this, opening up the basement can only mean good things, right? Nothing bad ever happens in a basement. Right? Red. So there we go then. Let's just keep on going to the left and we're heading back through the double doors. And what that's going to do is open up another wooden plank for us. So we're almost there now. And the basement is now open at the very right hand side. So again, if you want to save your game just to the left of you, Always worth doing just in case, because if it crashes or you mess up and you've got to go back even further. Well, boy, howdy, wouldn't that just pick it off. Anyway, into the basement, to the left, another, the final simple TV puzzle to do. Again, the answer's at the top. This time it's not actually as bad, we don't have much to do, we'll just exit the room and now the third out of three wooden planks will move so we can enter the door but what we're going to do first is hide from the fear monster once again before we do that. So there is a little cupboard to hide in at the very left. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is a scary looking thing. But there is a cupboard just off in the dark, dark distance right there on the left. So hide in there until scary ass shit dog goes away. Once you're sure he's gone, get your ass out of there and then enter the room to the left of the save game point. And now it's just... We're on to forgiveness, please. So, yeah, just, just enjoy and just keep watching the cutscenes. For now, we literally... I don't think we've got anything left to do in the game. It is all just smash through dialogue and enjoy the scenes, as I said. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we are very nearly done, but now we actually find out what all these things are, what sort of loss and forgiveness and hope and despair and all the things, all the negativity he's been feeling over the years. So just go into the kitchen first right here, but we're actually going to find out now why he is, why Price is the way he is. And there's going to be a little knock at the door. He's, yeah, yeah, I ain't seeing you no more. You just go ahead and enjoy the cutscenes. And feel the emotion whatever way you please. But you've got no time to rest on your laurels because as soon as we start, just keep running to the left. Hold X and keep running to the left, just trust me. So yeah, just trust me. There's nothing else to do except run at this point because Mr. Snowdy is pissed off. Thank you. 
So there we have it then guys and gals, this string 2 done, that was a bloody hell of an ending wasn't it really, fantastic game, thank you Jesse Mackinnon for this epic piece of epicness, really did enjoy it, <coughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed the game, hopefully you enjoyed the guide, I mean the story was absolutely fantastic, I loved every minute of it. But thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. You know, if this guy did help and we had a good laugh doing it, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out all my socials as well, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm also on Patreon now as well, so all the links are provided in the description below. Again, a big, massive thank you and a big shout out to TimG84 for the for his uh, continued support on Patreon. Absolutely fantastic. But again, thank you so, so much, guys. I shall see you in the next one. Big love. <laughs>